Great Falls is such a great place to get out and explore by foot, by snowshoe, and by skis. And on this episode of We're No Damn Experts, we're talking with the queen of hiking in this area. With hundreds of miles logged just this year alone on the trails, Katie Katinsky is giving us a rundown of some of the best places to hike in and around Great Falls. Best damn podcast, the best damn town. Want to get up, get ready to get down. With its big white sky and the wild river tank, if you want to go home, we can take you there to Great Falls, Montana. Welcome to the greatest damn town in Montana, Great Falls. I'm Rebecca Ingham. I'm Shanna Newth. And, and we're, we're No, no damn, damn Experts. I am super excited about the guests we have in the podcast yes. studio today. It only took me months <laughs> worth of conniving and convincing mm. and luring her in here. You mean I was out hiking all the time? <laughs> yeah. Which is appropriate for this. Um, and then additionally, you know, the weather does play a factor in our guest's life because mm-hmm. when... <laughs> when it's crappy out, she's like, you know, it's going to be crappy for the next couple of days. Can I just come in now so I don't screw up right. any of my other schedules? <laughs> and I said, sure. sure. Mm-hmm. So welcome to the podcast, the first timer, Katie Katinsky. Well, welcome, welcome, Thank welcome. Thank you welcome. for having me on. We are excited you're here and I'm excited to learn from you because I have lots of adventures I want to do and I don't quite know where to start. So, so Katie, avid hiker. And if the founder of Girls in Glacier, I'm making stuff up. I think these are true <laughs> things, but they may not be. This is where you can interject oh, if you well, want. When she, this if is, she's making things no. so far so good. <laughs> yes. Okay. So tell me about Katie. How long you lived in Great Falls? Um, what do you do? You just hike for your entire life? Is that what you do, or is there other things? Oh, you teach every now and again. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I'm kind of retired, but I do do keep my hands in a lot of pots. Um, I was a teacher. I did technology for the school district. And now I do some workshops for teachers and, you know, hiking things, especially <laughs> using Zoom and that kind of thing. Um, but... Oh, hiking education using Zoom. I'm like, that's got to yes. be the weirdest hiking experience yeah. ever if <laughs> well, you're on no, Zoom. Right? You know, like, where are you getting service to do this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, uh, we have a lot of first-timers backpacking, for example. Mm. So I might do oh, a Zoom yeah. on, you know, how to get started backpacking. Nice. And it's not just people from around here. but Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of fun to meet new people who are just starting out and... Getting in the outdoors. When did your hiking, your love of hiking, I'm assuming it's love because no one (laughs) would do this if they didn't love it. Um, When did that start? Well, it started when I was a child. My dad always went hunting a lot and I didn't really enjoy hunting, but I liked getting out early in the mornings and climbing to a mountaintop or something Mm. with him and we went camping just about every weekend. We had a cabin, so oh. it was during my childhood. And then, you know, life happens. You have kids, and you're really busy, and the kids have all these activities that sometimes don't mesh, and then kids leave, and you can rediscover <laughs> yourself, right? Yes. You can go back to those things that yeah. you enjoyed when you were younger and have time now. So are, I may have missed this. Are You're from Great Falls? No, I'm okay. not from Great Falls. I've been in Great Falls since 1983, though, okay. so oh, I kind yeah. of claim it. Um, yeah, but I have well. lived several <laughs> places in the state itself. I have lived in Mile City. Oh. I, I had a child born in Mile City. Wow. I had a child born in Superior, Montana, so oh, kind of complete oh my opposites, yeah. and then yeah. one here in Great Falls. Good so, job. Yeah. The east, the <laughs> west, the, the middle. State. That's <laughs> right. So I've seen quite a bit of the state. Wow. Yeah. I like Mile City. They have the bucking horse sale. That's what they're kind of known for, right? Yes. Yeah. When we were in college in Bozeman, we always had to go over there, right? Uh-huh. You know, it was a quite yeah. a road trip. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, thank God you're a bobcat. Yeah, I was yeah. like, Rebecca probably uh, did that too. Uh-oh. Yeah, that was probably bad to say. <laughs> yeah. Right now, you've made half the people tune out yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, there's two land grant universities in our state and they're rivals. And mm-hmm. one are bobcats for athletics, the other are grizzly for athletics. Yeah. People bobcats know what are Rebecca better. Is. I agree. I gotta say, I don't really care. <laughs> um, so your love of hiking started on the hunt, the hunting trips. It sounded like. Did your dad rope you into when he got something? You know, helping mm. drag animals out. No, because okay. you knew I didn't like Good. that. <laughs> I wasn't. I'm an animal lover, yes. so mm-hmm. it's pretty difficult. Yeah. <laughs> so it, in fact, he never even got anything when I was with him so I think he knew that this would probably not be a very good experience for his young daughter (laughs) and so fair yeah Mm -hmm. my husband is an avid hunter he loves it I love getting outdoors like you there was one I've never been with my husband I've been hunting with someone one time it was a friend of mine who was bow hunting and I was just hoping (laughs) that he would not get anything because I just didn't really want to be part of that process I have nothing against it I just don't want to be part of it myself so I'm exactly like that you know that's fine if others do it but yeah yeah I also went hunting with my spouse Mm. and um that happened one time yeah I was like I'm not sure I want to push my (laughs) well (laughs) when you breathe too loud and you walk too loud and your (laughs) pants are too loud I'm like you invited me like you said hey let's go hunt hiking together and I'll hunt I thought you were serious. Like you were, yeah. you were fine with me walking with you. <laughs> Turns out he was not, and yeah, me and the dog just ruined everything for him. So I'm like, well, that's fine. We can go hiking, and you can do whatever you do. <laughs> Maybe that <laughs> should be if I ever get roped into going. That should be my strategy: just be as obnoxious yeah. as possible. So it's I mean, they're like just throwing <laughs> rocks in when they're fishing, <laughs> right? Yep, mm-hmm. did yeah. that too when I was young. <laughs> nice. Yes. Yes. So how many miles have you put on? Oh, let's just go in the last 10, 15 years, because you seem to be gone hiking all the time. You know, that's a good question, because (laughs) we did start with our group, um, keeping track of miles and kind of giving some awards for when you hit the hundred, the um 500 in the thousand dollar mark and um i would say our top end people were hitting right around the 300 a year of strictly oh. hiking i mean that's not your around town or right. walking the river's edge like, trail here in great yeah. falls which is great to get in shape on right yeah. but um and last year several of us took up the challenge to hike 365 miles in 365 days so wow. and several of us made it so wow. I would are you say that's one of them probably yes good so, job yeah, yeah i'm saying that's probably it's around the 300 mile mark every year wow. that is crazy yeah i have friends who try to they made it their goal to get out every month of the year and go rafting every month out of the year do you make it a goal do you get out and hike every month out of the year or most of your miles happening between like june and september oh no we're we're out year round okay. for sure yeah. even yeah. they're on skis or snowshoes okay um most of my friends don't ski there are mm-hmm. few but and by ski you're talking cross-country skiing or backcountry back which skiing. is okay. not on groom trails so yeah. um we had a few trips last year organized by a couple of our gals um for just cross-country skiing mm-hmm. at silvercrest and then um a couple backcountry just um, like in Glacier Park or that's not a groom How groom much trail. harder is that? <laughs> it seems far more I'm challenging. I'm going to go with like yeah, super like hard. Far more no. challenging than groom trails. Well, it just depends. Okay. It's actually not as fast going downhill. It mm-hmm. slows you down because okay. you're in deeper snow. Yeah. So on that end, I think it's easier. But there's a lot more climbing usually involved sure. <laughs> on that. Yeah. And a lot of people skin up. They put... It's like a snake skin that have um, scales just one direction so that you can climb. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's a different type of ski that you would use than on a groom trail. Okay. So, so Katie, um, within this area, I'm just going to assume you've hiked all of all of the land. Um, 
hiked. You've hiked Glacier. Now you're exaggerating. <laughs> Just a little bit, Rebecca. Well, you've hiked but Glacier. How about, how about saying I've hiked in the main areas around here, but <laughs> okay, I wouldn't say all the go. trails. <laughs> so you've done Glacier. Yes, and guess what? Great Falls is so wonderful to the east side of Great Glacier. And mm-hmm. thank you for yes. those of you who say that the west side is better. We it's have to not. say the east side has the views. Mm-hmm. You know, the trees don't get in your way. It so is true. so beautiful on this side. All of our mountain ranges have the views. You've done Bob Marshall Wilderness Complex. Yes. You've done Elements of the Rocky Mountain Front. Yes. You've done Highwood Mountains. And don't forget with the Bob Marshall, you also have the Great Bear connected to it in the north. And you have the scapegoat to the south. It's all part of that complex. But some people say, oh, the scapegoat's separate. But yes, it is, but not really. No, Mm. it's the complex. done that, yes. Um, Big belts you've done. Yes. You've done um, Highwoods. Yes. Little belts. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> um, you've done Sweetgrass Hills? Yes. Huh? See, look at this. Climb right. the three major peaks there. You've How got about Gold the- Butte and West Butte and East Butte. And East Butte has two peaks and done both of those, Royal and Mount Brown. Oh, I didn't know that so, about yeah. the Sweetgrass. Well, I know nothing about the sweet <laughs> yeah, No, other than I was proud I remembered the name because yes. sometimes I don't remember the name of that place. They're so but. fun. And we got our Canadian sister hiking group to come with us because they always look over the border at those sweet grass yeah. hills. Yeah. And so that was really fun to hike that with them. How about uh, the bear paws? Yes. Oh, definitely. So it's the bear really paw or bear's paw. Yeah, I was. I said that, <laughs> and then I was like, "Nope, paw? that was wrong." It's technically the bear's paw mountains. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So, and that's really nice with that. Um, is it the Beaver Creek mm-hmm. County Park? Yes, the only county oh. park. It's an you impressive know, in, county park yeah, too. It's yes. Mm-hmm. And this is so. so this one for those who need kind of a reference point because we really haven't talked about the bear spot. Well, because they're out of our listening area. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it's still this is still a great place to stay. You can oh, make your that's trip up true. there. We yeah. are a bouncing off but, point, and yes. it's within a day trip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From us. Yes. Thank so you, Katie. Thank you, Katie. To know yeah. that <laughs> yes. we day trip it, and yep. what a great place to have is mm-hmm. a base camp for going to these places on a day trip. Almost like we know what we're doing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you spoke right to our language here. That's um, what we tell but people. Beaver Creek State County Park is about an hour and a half. half. Yeah. I mean, if you take the, I think the most scenic route is if you get off like a, near Rocky Boy mm-hmm. and head go, in go that. Go through the reservation. And, yeah. you know, so many people... They say, oh, I don't want to cut through there, or I'm treading on somebody's property. No, it's just beautiful Mm -hmm. to go through there and see that land. I think it's the prettiest. I mean, I've only, grown up in the eastern part of the state on the High Line, I'd only ever come in from Haver, so from the north into that park. I was just enamored with the route coming in from... Mm -hmm. Have you been up Mount Otis and seen the views from up there? No. And that is not a very hard mountain to climb. So, you know, it's just like two miles round trip. Oh. And the views are amazing. I think you can see like nine mountain ranges and yeah. it's really pretty. You need to do it. And we've okay. done it in the winter time, mm. And it's even prettier with the mountains with the snow. Nice. Now, I have talked with uh, a Tom Katinsky that you might be familiar <laughs> with. Um, he's My illustrious <laughs> husband, <laughs> yes. He's written some books. But we were talking one time, and he talked about this hike um, out near York uh, that you walk up a canyon and see these red flowers that only bloom for a short period of mm. time. I think he said like in June. Actually, it would be in April. Okay. Maybe the first week in May. That would be late, though, on a late year. And they are the Kelsea Uniflora. They are the, they are (laughs) a very, very rare rose. And it is in the Trout Creek Canyon, right by Vigilante Campground. And it's a fabulous experience. Really easy hike. Oh, about four miles round trip to get right up close with the roses. Uh, the Kelsey Uniflora, or you can just go in about a half mile and see them up on the cliffs. 
okay. you know, from a distance. I like. I need to make. I feel like I should have been. Well, that's like why we made notes throughout this. That's why we're putting it yeah. on audio so people can just go back and yeah. listen and take all the notes they need to and then do some research. Mm-hmm. But all and these, that's in April. Yes. Okay. It's in April. I need to like when put they a bloom. note on my calendar. If you year. follow the Native Plant Society here, they usually post if they're blooming or not. Okay. Another thing Wait, I need to do. There's a Native Plant Society in Green Falls? Yes. Huh, look yes. at what we're learning today, I, so folks. So much. I know. So many pages, things I need to follow now. Yeah. yeah. So it's really, it is worth doing. It's even worth doing if the flowers aren't blooming because yeah. the canyon's nice and cool and there's a stream going through it. So, mm. And it's open year round. They do plow that road. So it's not how f- really crazy road. How far is that from Great Falls? Oh. Where are we talking? I want to say an hour. Hour 45? Uh, not, not that far okay. because it's not clear to Helena. Okay. And it just, of course, depends on the road a little bit, too. Okay. The it's drive, usually pretty good. The drive say into an hour and a half. York and then past York is gorgeous. Okay. Mm, like it's, and I prefer it like on a drizzly day. Like oh. that is my favorite time to drive out there is on a drizzly day. Yeah. I don't know why. It just feels right. Well, that mist in the canyon can be pretty romantic. You know, it is. <laughs> I'm only ever by myself, so I hold my own hand. <laughs> Go for a and, walk. And Maybe it works better that Guess way. What? It's a flat hike, too. Oh, hey. So okay. that's pretty nice. And you can do a six miles round trip mm. if you want to do the whole length of the canyon and back. Nice. We had on the podcast uh, <laughs> probably the weirdest experience for Willie ever in his <laughs> life, but a, a Willie Sloan, local resident, and he did Mount Wright. Uh, so we, I had him, Shannon convinced him to come on the podcast <laughs> and we talked to him about that. But I fell in love with Mount Wright because of the photos you took mm. of Mount Wright that we've then shared um, heavily all over the world. <laughs> um when how often have you done Mount Wright? Because my guess is there's a lot of these trails you might do often. I do. Um, I would say I've probably done Mount Wright around eight to ten times. Okay. Mm. Um, it is a tough climb because it's steep. It people say see that it says six miles round trip, but it's going to take you <laughs> all day to do these six miles because it's the angle of Mount Wright is rather steep, but it's a very, very good trail. So just take your time and make your way to the top. And there are two saddles along the way that even if you make it to those saddles, the views are incredible. Mm. So a lot of people say it's one of the best places for views in the whole state. Wow. You can just see for miles, you can see into Canada, you can see Glacier Park, you can see to the south and the bridges and yeah. One of the other photos that I've seen of yours that just get me giddy and I've not done it and I'm probably going to screw it up but I want to say it's Muddy Creek oh Muddy Creek Falls that's another favorite it's like in a you haven't been there yet no okay I'm taking tell me I don't I I know nothing about this one tell tell us all about it so this one's out of Bynum Montana okay so of course I know that it's not in Great Falls, but I would stop at the rock shop and <laughs> yes. and the dinosaur yes. museum yep. there. You Good know. features. Mm-hmm. And um, this is about a five-mile hike, and it's pretty flat. You're following an old creek bed, though, so you have un- uneven footing on those creek bed rocks. Okay. Yeah. So just be aware of that. And, of course, you want to bring your wading shoes because the end part is in the water. Mm. And it's really it all, unique. All year it's in water? It is. Okay. Yes. And it it's a slot canyon that dead ends. And at the dead end, the waterfall is coming through the rock in the top. Mm. So, and falling right down. It on just you. looks like. And the canyon is gorgeous. Too. Shale and sandstone. And yeah. it's just the photo. I'll show it to you. Okay. And then people can guess which one on our, I think it's on our Instagram okay. feed. Going Not back. recently, but right. you got to go back. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've always loved that picture because I'm like, this looks like a whole nother planet. Five miles, yeah. anybody can do that, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and mm-hmm. a flat, just take your time on the rocks. Yep. Yeah, make sure you got good shoes. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, a real quick, like, technical question. So, sure. waders, like, are you talking, what kind of, 
I mean, when I picture waders, I picture like a fisherman out there and like the big waders. So <laughs> oh, what, no. when you're going hiking and you're saying you need <laughs> waiting <laughs> shoes, <laughs> waiting <laughs> shoes, waiting shoes. What exactly are the, are those? Something I can pull on over things, or I need to switch out footwear mm-hmm. entirely? Yes, we usually switch out to something okay. like Keens, or some people wear Tevas. Um, oh, so you I can, can bring also my use Crocs. Crocs. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So exactly. just a sandal, okay. some type of a sturdy. Yeah. Okay. Not flip flops. I wouldn't yeah. recommend because you know if the stream is flowing, those come off your feet you want yeah. something around the back of your heel holds yes. on to your yes. foot uh-huh. okay and will protect you a little bit the little thicker sole yes. than a flip-flop okay yeah. thank you for rocks. clarifying because i'm yes. picturing like oh i need to go on like fishing these, like ba- no, right no no, no. i got shot those we're good you okay. know some people just wear a pair of old tennies mm-hmm. you know and they, don't they call care. them their They're fishing tennies or something. yes yeah. yep and they just wear fishing shoes fishing now tennies. i've been with some I mean, I'm going to call them hardcore hikers that choose to just hike through the water in their hiking shoes oh, with yeah. their socks on and then hike wet until they dry. Yeah, okay. Well, just, just checking. You just, just so you uh, know what you're getting into. It's not a super not, long hike, but, mm. you know, if you're prone to blisters at all, you know mm. what happens when your feet have been in the water too long. Yep. They get soft and they can get blisters on the hiking portion. I don't prefer to do that because... I want to be able to hike the next week, right? right? And if my feet are all blistered up, I can't hike the next week. So mm-hmm. I'm going to protect my feet. Sloppy if you do that, but yeah. Yeah, in a pinch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can do that. But yeah. like your Crocs, you can just, they're really super lightweight. You yeah. can carabiner them onto your well, that's a good idea. Pack. Your pack or mm-hmm. your belt or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. I like that. I would think I'd stick them in the pack, but then if you want to chain carabiner, yeah. that's just, just pull them like, out. Lots of good tips slip here. Slip them, yeah. slip them on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so that's Muddy Creek. You said it's about five miles, miles for that, trip. and overall, it's a little unstable because it's a creek bed. But otherwise, it's not. There's not large elevation changes. No. Okay. It just if you imagine a stream bed, mm-hmm. usually they don't go up or down too yeah. much. It's following that a slight uphill going and a slight downhill coming okay. out. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm gonna shift gears just a little bit because. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about girls in Glacier. Is that an active group still? And does it accept members? Does it, like, can people join and have you go lead them places? What's what's going on with that? What's the deal? (laughs) Well, girls in Glacier kind of fell apart during COVID, like Mm. so many things did. But a lot of us still get together and hike together. And we, you know, if people have contacted us, we will invite guests once in a while, you know, or if we have room <laughs> in the vehicles and things like that. So, yes, um, we still have a website up that okay. has our past hikes. So that's a good way to start, too. You can just use the search bar. And if you're interested in Muddy Creek, you could just type in Muddy Creek mm-hmm. and up will pop the blog post and it will give you an idea because we usually post when we started when we ended so it kind of give you an idea of how long this hike takes and lots of photos to go along with that so you can say oh yeah that is a place I want to go mm-hmm. after I see these photos I think the photos just get your appetite wet because you're like I want to go see that in person mm-hmm. obviously not real great for me because I I'm in love with Mount Wright and Muddy Creek, but then don't go. But <laughs> so don't be like me. Be like somebody else who gets excited who and goes. actually does the stuff. But I'd start with Muddy Creek first. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll still work want your to way go. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, work your way up. That's um, so that's good. Mm-hmm. What is what has been your favorite day hike and then your favorite backpack trip? Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> well, I think I, would, I think I would have to say Patrol Mountain. Oh, we talked about hike. that one. Yeah. And yeah. the reason I like that is Sam Sarah, who is the lookout. So this has a lookout tower on top of it. So it's a it's a challenging hike, but not too challenging. The, the elevation gain is not quite like Mount Wright. It's... Um, has more switchbacks and things, so it's not so straight up. And even though it is 12 miles round trip. Oh, 
It's an extensive but at the hike. end, <laughs> yes, it's an extensive hike, but I think it's easier than Mount Wright, which is six miles. So don't okay. let the miles scare you. And then at the top, you get to see Stam Sarah, and she is always so gracious. She lets you in the lookout. Some of the lookouts are pretty private, and they have signs up. This is private residence. Don't approach. Yeah. Um, for example, Swift Current Peak, they have that. But she comes out, greets you, and lets you go in. She shows you her fire finder and educates mm. you on what the oh. life is like up there. Neat. And shows you her knitting projects, too, because wow. she's always <laughs> knitting up there. Yeah. That's really neat that so, she invites you into that because that just makes it a whole other experience. It for that. is really mm-hmm. a special place to go. Mm-hmm. So that okay. is a long day hike. And then for backpack, um, I know you probably want me to say around here, but I have to <laughs> say no, Glacier you can say Park. Anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say two in Glacier Park, and one is in the Pole Bridge area. Yeah. That's the hole in the wall, and you start at Bowman Lake and you end at Kintla Lake. Okay. Um, or even just going up to Hole in the Wall and then back down to Bowman that same way. And you need a reservation ticket to do that now correct i'm looking to someone else not me okay um yeah if you're going all of the entrances to get in so bowman lake but is if you have a backpacking station. permit permit you do not need any okay. vehicle reservations because yeah. there's no other way for you to get backpacking but to travel those roads so okay. if you are lucky enough to get drawn on the mm. backpacking permit and the permits go um go online on March 15th, unless that's a holiday or something, then they might move it a day. Okay. Um, But March 15th is when they generally... So there's um, a limited number of those. Yes, there are a limited number. And I wouldn't say it's super hard as long as you give a wide window of when you can go. If you can only go over one weekend, the chances are pretty slim. But if you say from July 15th to August 20th, give me any time during then, you'll probably be able to get a permit. And when we're saying backpacking, we're talking you're staying overnight out in the wilderness, correct? Is yes. That what we're... Multiple days. Yes. yes. Okay. So um, that hole in the wall trip would be five nights or six nights, oh, wow. depending okay. on how many miles you want to do in a day. Okay. And um, then I did a really great one last summer in the Belly River area, which is a little less known area of the park, which is right near the Canadian border by the mm. Chief Chief Mountain oh. Crossing. Yeah. Okay. So there's no gate. There's mm-hmm. nothing to get into there. There's just a little parking lot. <laughs> yeah. And um, we went into Cosley Lake and Glen's Head Lake and saw Don Miss Falls and an unnamed waterfall that many people claim is the most beautiful waterfall in Glacier Park. And mm. I have to agree. It was really? fabulous. It's, it's, there's no name for it. There's no name huh. on it. And it's technically off trail, but so many people have been going to it when they backpack that there's an obvious trail. thin trail. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many bears have you encountered on your <laughs> hiking trips in Glacier? I couldn't None. tell you the number. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't tell you the number for yeah. sure. Um, a lot. Yeah. A lot mm-hmm. of bears. So you want to be prepared. Obviously, right. you want to know not only buy bear spray, but mm-hmm. know how to use it. Mm-hmm. You need to get an expired can and shoot it off or or one of the testers that I know that um, Bighorn here in town has some testers. Yeah. I imagine Shields oh, probably does okay. as well. And just make sure that you know how to get the safety mm-hmm. off and are ready to go because I've been on several trips where unfortunately that's what I have to remind people of because mm-hmm. I thought, well, you have your bear spray. Great. We're all set. Well, we encountered a bear coming straight at us. Mm. I was playing sweep, which means the last person in Mm -hmm. the line of a group. Mm. And um, not one person could either get their bear spray. One had it carabinered on. Well, it's carabinered. Couldn't get the carabiner off. Um, One person had it in the backpack. How in the world are you going to get it out of the backpack in time? Mm -hmm. Another person cannot figure out how to get the safety off. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, just wait for a high adrenaline situation. Get this out. So I had to run ahead with the barrel spray. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah. So. You um, saved the day. Well, I don't know if I saved the day (laughs) because the bear did run off down the cliff before it came to us. But it was 
coming up at a fast clip right facing us. And okay. that was So I'm just going to reiterate, alerting. Katie, you just told us that mm-hmm. you ran straight Towards at a bear. A bear. Okay. Well, she's nodding her head. She nodded her head, <laughs> yes, folks. That is the kind of caliber of person yeah. we're dealing that with in the studio. No, yeah. <laughs> that tells you a little bit about Katie Katinsky. Yes. Yeah. I want my friend to get eaten by the bear yeah. instead. No. Yeah, because technically you were in the safest well, spot. I mean, they would have had to go right. through all the others before you. That's what they always say, whoever. You can, right. if you can run faster slowest, than yes. yes. <laughs> that kind of a situation. But yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. so for, it wouldn't have been pretty <laughs> for people coming here who we don't want that to deter you, but you do no. just need to be prepared. So have your bear just spray, play. make sure it's readily available, easy to access and not expired and you know how to use it. Yeah. 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 And any of our outdoor stores here would mm-hmm. be able to yeah. show you how to do that, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. It's always good to practice, mm-hmm. learn the experience. And unless you know what you're doing, like Katie, don't be a hero and run towards, <laughs> don't <laughs> run towards the bear. Yeah. <laughs> that had to have been scary for the bear. Like, yeah, woman, like, what whoa. are you doing? That I'm taking this <laughs> <Yeah>. route. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Have I'm you a seen, big bad yeah. bear. Mostly people run away from me, and this one's running towards yeah. me. Oh. Uh, what other, aside from you know, like deer and squirrels, what kind of other oh. wildlife have you seen in Glacier? Well, I or will on any say of your hikes. the coolest thing I've ever seen is wolverines. Oh, Ooh, wow. so sliding down snow fields. So that ah. was probably a really neat experience. And then probably the second neatest experience was um, looking down on some elk, um, mm. a big bull elk, kind mm. of pushed a bunch of cows into the middle of a lake. And we were up on a pass looking down at this. And we didn't know what was going on. And it's like, this is really cool taking a look at this um, bull elk. And then the females would go to the shore and all of a sudden something would happen and he would get his horns and push them back into the lake. And we thought, this is fall or, you know, this is, this is not really the right time for him to be hassling the cows. What's going on? Well, there were wolves in the bushes and those cows would go out and the wolves would come. And Mm. so I got some really good pictures of these wolves just surrounding. Wow. And it was, you know, it was quite the thing to see. We didn't, we waited about a half an hour and I didn't really want to see it anyway. It was time yeah. to leave. But yeah. um, I'm sure that it didn't turn out well for one of those elk because they couldn't just stay in that lake forever and ever. Yeah. No. But yeah. Well, and wolves are wow. fairly determined animals. They're, yeah. yeah. They don't give. There's not mm-hmm. a lot of give up in those things. No. Wow. So that that's pretty. But I mean, you also have the very pesky marmots and <laughs> Richardson and Colombian ground squirrels and the golden manhole ground squirrels. And unfortunately they're really pesky because people have <laughs> fed, fed them. them. <laughs> yes. And so they've associated oh. humans with food and they will chew right through your pack. Oh You're my sitting gosh. down and you take your pack off and you don't even hear them and they're chewing right through <laughs> your pack. So you have to be really careful. We stopped uh, on Beartooth Highway and there's a beautiful overlook there and the squirrels there are aggressive i mean massively aggressive and we were one of two people at this time of the day at this overlook and they just kept coming towards me because they were so used to humans have food and they just were starting to freak me out because there were just 20 30 of them just oh coming towards you it's like some oh, weird scene yeah. out of <laughs> yeah it's, it's like a weird alfred horror hitchcock movie. <laughs> thing and i'm like quit coming at i'm like yeah. i'm done i went and sat in the car i'm like they're gonna run up my leg or Ew. try it's just yeah. gross they're like fuzzy mice i didn't like them at all <laughs> i did not like if they had kept their distance i'd have been fine yeah. but they just kept especially that they're many. cute when they're at a distance yeah. but the problem and is is people try one to or draw two. in with a peanut you mm-hmm. know yeah. it's cute when they're at a distance and there's only one or two of them right. when there's 20 there's of like them and they keep coming towards you and that herd mentality takes in <laughs> like i think i'm gonna be taken down by these things i'm yeah, done that's how you go <laughs> And if it is, I want a podcast episode where you guys make fun of it. <laughs> In loving memory of just the most bizarre way she could have caught. What uh, she'd always worried was going to take her down was a herd of squirrels. Well, in the spring, throw you out here in our, in oh, our that yard. That'll, that'll 
that'll get you there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Marmot <sighs> carried off a Who, pole once a as pole? we were sitting down. Yeah, and I guess like a hiking they li- pole. Yes, okay. they like the salt, you know, from oh, the from sweat. Oh. handles and the sweat. So they grabbed hold of the handle and <laughs> carried oh. off the hiking pole. Oh so you got to watch everything when you sit down for lunch. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, Katie. Let's uh, let's just name drop a bunch of trails that you think are easy entry, beautiful yeah. experiences. Let's see if we can get five to ten of them so Shannon can start doing some research yes. around <laughs> this area. And let's hit all three mountain ranges. So maybe two or three per mountain range. And <laughs> and if you want to do the Alice Creek oh district we did a whole podcast of something we know nothing about the alice Mm -hmm. creek area um near lincoln tell us tell us some i can start off with the alice creek the alice creek um that's over rogers pass Mm -hmm. and there's a turn called alice creek and i will say that's really really pretty in june Mm -hmm. the um the cranes are out there oh. in the fields as well as the camas blooms, the blue camas, the mm. ones that the Indians dug for the um, roots. Yeah, okay. the camas fields that you might hear, especially with the Nez Perce, um, because that's what they're doing in the big hole when they were being chased, is digging in those um, beautiful camas fields. So you see that, and then at the end where the campground and everything is. You can take a hike. I think it's about three miles round trip to Lewis and Clark Pass. So you can take another hike from the end of that hike? No, no it's, it's just a drive. A drive. Oh, so okay. you could just I take see. a beautiful drive in there and then see the camas fields I and see. the cranes okay. are out there clicking and, you know, wow. doing their mating dances and things. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Getting sexy Token. with the there birds. You go. <laughs> And then at the end of the road is a hike up to okay. Lewis and Clark Pass. Yeah. And I'm not a Lewis and Clark historian. You'd have to ask someone like Norm Anderson <laughs> yeah. of exactly what happened at Lewis and Clark Pass. Okay. But yeah. there's a big sign. We on yeah, we read about it in the brochure. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't Sorry. remember anything because she read it. But there's I a big <laughs> sign up there yeah. that marks the spot. Yeah. And we have pamphlets. So we we're, we keep saying this. <laughs> One day we came to work and there was just a box of pamphlets for it sitting at our doorstep yeah so we're like well so we dug in and learned some stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah that, it's it's really nice for that and then there's a complete loop that you can do oh. from there so you can go to the left and you'll end up in the scapegoat wilderness it's right at the gate mm. gateway of the oh, scapegoat okay. And it does a loop back around to the parking area. Okay. You could also go right and you go up Green Mountain and you continue on. It's 10 miles to Rogers Pass. Mm. Holy moly. And so that's one of our very favorite. We would put a car, we'd drop a car on the way in at Rogers Pass and go into Alice Creek and do a hike through. Mm. And we often do a key exchange. So one group Ah. starts on one side and one's on the other side. So that we don't have to shuttle the cars at yeah. the end. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes we out. have some people who just don't want to do that big of a hike. Mm-hmm. They just want to go up to Lewis and Clark Pass and back. Yeah. And so we'll they, drop our car and then they we jump they in their get to car. Pick you up. And, yeah. <laughs> and then they just take us into Lewis and Clark <laughs> Pass and then we hike through to our cars at Rogers. So, oh. you know, and that is the Continental Divide Trail, mm-hmm. which I don't know if I'll very many people know runs from Mexico clear to Canada and we have some of the most beautiful sections right Mm -hmm. here I mean on the edge that that is 70 minutes from Great Falls to Rogers Pass Mm -hmm. and going to Flesher Pass all those areas it's beautiful in the winter and it's great in the summer the flowers are amazing all along the Continental Divide and you're high up seeing Mm -hmm. all those views yeah Yeah. I have actually done with um Oh my goodness, totally spacing on the name. But I've done a guided hike years ago with my dad from Rogers to Flesher Pass. And it was a f- long day, but it was Yeah, it's 13 really and a half beautiful. miles. Yeah. It's beautiful. beautiful. Yes. It should be a long yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> and lots yeah. of elevation gain. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it is so pretty. Yeah. It's very pretty. It's a good one. So then you want, like um, you said, so that Lewis and Clark Pass is entry level. Okay. That's, it does have some uphill, but three miles you can do that. And um, probably in the little belts, if you want something entry level, you could just go partway into the sluice boxes. Mm -hmm. 
You could um, go up Payne Gulch out of Monarch, which is right across from okay. the um, Ace in the Hole sign. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Right there. So it's across the highway from that. Um, in the summertime, just going up to the top of Porphyry. And there's a lookout up there, too. And yeah. there's a new gal up there. And she, she was very friendly this year and let us in to her lookout. <laughs> so she said Sam Sarah has been from uh, patrol has been giving her a lot of tips on, on things. <laughs> How to and, do that. Yeah. And they usually have color books for kids and things like oh, that. Nice. So oh. that's a little easier one. And it's, yeah. it's kind of fun. Um, of course, Memorial Falls is pretty easy, and, yeah. and that's just right by Nyhart. Um, and for entry level, I think that those those are some good pretty good ones. Good start. We're in the little belts. Can I pause real quick while sure. we're in the little belts? Have you ever done um, like hiked up Kings Hill in the winter when it's or in the summer? I'm sorry, when it's not ski season. Have you explored around there? Yes, okay. definitely have. Mm-hmm. Um, it is motorized in the summer, so okay. you do have to be um, careful yeah. of motorbikes and four-wheelers and even some Jeeps if you're on the bigger okay. roads. But, in fact, we just went up this summer to enjoy the wildflowers. There's mm. some special flowers up there, so you might want to take a look. Um, there's the limestone columbine that you usually only see on the top of very high peaks. Oh. oh. And so they, it's a reward for the elevation to get, yeah, <laughs> to beca- get up the ski hill. Yes, yeah. but this um, this is not on the ski hill. This is oh, on the okay. Kings Hill side. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's what I thought you were asking. On the well, Kings Hill is yes. across the road. Yes, we have Porphyry I forget Peak. that. Yep. Yep. And mm-hmm. so Kings Hill, um, that is not very hard to walk up and it's a road you can walk up the road or you can walk up a trail that's a little steeper okay and um there are just tons of wallflowers when you get to the top they're just all over so that yes and then um you can just walk you're like on top of the world you're looking across at the ski hill and you can see mountain ranges for quite a ways on the king's hill side and of course it's fun in the winter as well Mm -hmm. and then in on the porphyry side of course you have the lookout tower that you can go to and you can follow any of those ski trails they're all marked with blue diamond so Mm. you can just look for the next blue diamond ahead of you there's going to be a little more deadfall and downfall with the trees that have fallen over but they're covered when there's snow on the ground Mm. so you have a little you know lifting your leg up here and going under there (laughs) to get around (laughs) these fallen trees okay because they don't clear it as well on the ski trails. Gotcha. Yeah. They don't need to. The snow covers it up. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah I just wanted to, while we were talking about the little mm-hmm. belts, wanted to ask about that area, that area. for hiking, yeah. too. It, so, it okay. is a great area. Okay. Now. And you um, want the Rocky Mountain Front? Let's yeah. do the ro- back, yeah. to, back to the other side, Rocky Mountain Front. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I would suggest out of Augusta going up McCarty Hill and... That's going to give you beautiful views of not just the Rocky Mountain front, but um, like Haystack and then the plains on the other side. So, and it's, I think, about three to four miles round trip. Yes, it does have some, but it's very gradual elevation gain. And it's a good trail that is next to the um, Girl Scout camp. It's just up the road a little bit from Scoutana. Um, And it's, it's really nice. Um, another one is um, Hannon Gulch and Wagner Basin. Okay. And if you go along, if you park at the entrance to Hannon Gulch, there's a really nice trail just over the bridge that leads you to the pictographs, and it goes all oh, along the, the river there. Very and neat. yes, they're very neat, and there's interpretive signs about cool. the pictographs. And then if you go the other direction up, Wagner Basin, there's a skull tree where a gal has oh. painted mostly birds, but some other animals too, on the skulls that she's found around the area. Deer wow. skulls, bighorn sheep. And almost, I would say about 50% of the time, you'll see the herd of bighorn sheep in there in wow. the Wagner wow. Basin. And that's just about a mile in to the skull tree, but you can go clear up to the top of the creek or the co- top of the cliff. And get beautiful views over that um, Sun Canyon Valley. Oh, and that's, that's right. I that's not right. Heard of that. ac- that's pretty much 
right across from the Sun Canyon Lodge. Okay. So you'd go to the Sun Canyon Lodge, and then which is on the left as you're mm-hmm. driving from Augusta, and then over on the right, be watching for the bridge to the Hannah yeah. Gulch area. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. It's well, really it's interesting. It's, it is not disturbed, or people respect the art of what she's that artist has done there with the paintings and things. For the most part, okay. um, the the artist is a niece of um, a gal who used to live here in Great Falls. She moved to Missoula, and the niece lives in Missoula now. She okay. moved a couple of years ago. And she they have a cabin right there. Okay. Oh. Uh, for service lease mm-hmm. cabin. And it says the Crago cabin. So anyway, um, she said a few have been taken, mm. especially right after she's done them with a really yeah. fresh... Um, yeah. People, People want leave free the skulls. Art. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. For others to enjoy. Art. Yes. Mm-hmm. Gosh, you're not packing up the right. Lewis and Clark statue. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> leave the skulls. Yes. Yeah. That's neat, though. That's That sounds like a fun thing. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. And then there's a little cliff, too, there that's a pretty easy um, hike up to as well. There's an old Forest Service cabin. So if you drive down the road after you, the bridge, you'll see that Forest Service cabin and the trails right up behind that. Mm-hmm. Okay. to the top of the cliff with beautiful views and that's probably two miles round trip okay. so those are some pretty good beginner ones yeah. in the rocky mountain front they're all There's doable lots of them. yeah these yeah. are very doable how about uh in the high woods oh the high woods um if you go to the thane creek campground yeah. there are quite a few you know options there mm-hmm. and you can get up to windy point yes and from there and then if you go the North Fork, which is my favorite, is a center ridge hike. Now, if you do the whole thing, it's eight to nine miles. But in May, it is amazing. We counted almost 100 different wildflowers in that area. Oh, it's wow. so green. The mm-hmm. green almost hurts your eyes. It's so beautiful <laughs> there. And the streams are just beautiful. So if you instead of going to Thane Creek, which be to the left, it says North Fork, you go to the right go to the end of the road there's parking and a um, outhouse there and take that hike and you could in two miles round trip you can get to where all the beautiful wildflowers are and they're all along the way too but you come out to the open ridge and especially those arrow leaf balsam root they look like sunflowers Mm -hmm. they're Mm -hmm. just everywhere Mm. really pretty um Areas we haven't covered that are near Great Falls that we obviously know nothing Don't about, know about yeah. <laughs> that we should be bragging about every now and again yeah. to the right people. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> um, I would say that a really fun one, and it's not very, not very far, and it's great in the winter and in the summer, is called Skidway, Skidway Campground, okay. which is in between White Sulphur Springs and Townsend, so... Hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 If you go there and there's a three mile loop, it's a little bit longer in the wintertime because you can't get into the campground to park. You have to park at the highway. They plow a little pull out and it's marked for cross country or as we say back country because it's not Mm -hmm. it's not groomed. Um, with the blue diamonds and you can just follow those diamonds in the summer too but you don't really need to follow them because you can see the trail trail in the summer um but there used to be a little ski hill there and you can see the remnants of the lifts they had two little lifts um palm lifts or something like that you know now obviously i don't know everything i mean this is pretty (laughs) evident to anybody who's listened to this podcast um but I've taken that road with the intent, the sole intent of finding trails along that road. And I can't for the life of me picture where this is. Well, guess what? I had, I had, I had Google put Skidway into their maps. So if you type in Skidway, oh, thank you. it'll be it to right the there. So thanks, yeah. Katie, for it's taking there. care of that Yay. for me. <laughs> and, and Skidway Hill is marked in there so that you can make your way up. There are bigger hikes, too, to um, Grassy Mountain Okay, there. So you can go up that if you like. Um, but that little, the wildflowers in the mm. spring in early June, even late May, just amazing. Mm. And 
even into July, they completely change. So if you go in June and then go in July, you'll just see all this amazing different wildflowers. And then the views in the wintertime of, you know, Mount Edith, the highest yeah. point yeah. in the big belts. Yeah. It's just incredible. Yeah. So it and then on your way home you can soak it white sulfur spring you see? Mm-hmm. and then make the loop or what we sometimes do instead we'll go to Helena and have a di- you know dinner, dinner and on way it's a beautiful loop mm-hmm. I was just going to ask like how much cuz you have to fuel yourself before and after these things mm. how much does the food scene play into <laughs> some of the options for your hikes cuz I mean I think you, um, I've talked about Swift Dam up near, um, that's another favorite. Pendroy. Nope. Depuyer. There we go. And the whole reason I love that area to hike around in is because then I get to eat a buffalo and chips Joe's. before I come home. That hot like. slaw is amazing, <laughs> I have to say. So oh, I've not had that. How much, how much is driven by the food afterwards? <laughs> a lot. <no. laughs> Thank you, Well, Katie. I know, I know we, we are Great Falls, mm-hmm. but we do like to stop in the small towns and enjoy yeah. their little restaurants mm-hmm. and just look around the small towns. That's part of the joy of living yeah. here too, is yeah. all of our precious little towns that we have. Totally. Yeah. Now, the other thing I want to ask is the uh, um, Wild Montana, which used to be something else, Montana Wilderness. Wilderness. MWA. That's yeah. what I was trying mm-hmm. to think of yep. earlier with the guided hike. Yes. I mm-hmm. think, do you, do you volunteer to do some of the guided hikes for them? Yes, Still? my husband and I yeah. do. Um, our hike this year was canceled. We like to do Fairview Mountain, which is okay. out of Augusta in the Rocky Mountain front. Great mountain to climb to. And um, this year, though, with that uh, torrential rains that we had, it was tough. rock slides came mm. and obliterated the trail. Oh. And oh. it was in a section with a steep drop off. So some oh. people were trying to negotiate those rocks, but they were loose and you're sliding down. Oh, and yeah. we thought we better not lead a hike <laughs> We're responsible yeah. for other people on this one. We <laughs> yeah, don't so want to we'll do that. Wait. Yeah. We'll wait yeah. until they get that trail cleared. So I heard it's cleared now. So we put those Wild Montana hikes on our website mm-hmm. so that people can kind of plan for that. Because I think it's a really nice thing that that happens yeah. is the opportunity to join the group that's going to take you to some of these places. And I think they do a fantastic job as mm-hmm. just being a strong partner and getting people out into the wilderness and experiencing mm-hmm. it. So And they do. And I'll tell you, just as a little plug for them as well, is they have um, a website on, well... It's a sub website on there of a map with all these hikes listed. Oh, so, and it tells you driving directions yes. and how hard the hike is and yeah. little tips and descriptions of the hike. Yeah. So. And they've got books that mm-hmm. you can buy, comes with your membership. membership. Mm. They're, and they're different every year, and That's they highlight right. uh, different hikes, not just within our area, but yeah. all over the state of Montana. And I think Tom lent me some of them, and they're just amazing. I'm yeah. just a nerd. I go through them, and I'm like, oh, look yeah. at they highlight at this hike. So... I, I that, learn stuff <laughs> and then I go to, yeah. and then I stock Katie's pages and find out what the pictures look there like. There you go. Know. You can do your research. <gasps> I want to live there. I want to go mm-hmm. there. I want to see that. I, so that leads into my kind of big question I had too, because I mean, I've lived here for a while. I've done guided hikes. I've gone, you know, on various hikes and I love it, but I also sometimes just don't know where to start to find new places and the information I need to know and how to get there. So aside from what we talked about with the Wild Montana guided hikes and using them as a resource, I just downloaded recently the All Trails app. Willie had told us about that. What other resources, especially if you're not familiar with the area, how can I find all of these trails? How can I know what to expect? How can I pick where to go? Help me. Okay. <laughs> Seems like a big question. Yeah. I, I will plug my husband's yes, um, Rocky Mountain book. Front book. Okay. So if you're interested in the Rocky Mountain Front, that's probably a really definitive resource for you. And what is it called? And remind people his Discover name. Discover the that. Rocky Mountain Front by Tom Kotinski. Okay. And um, it's available on Amazon and at our local. Yeah, uh, Cassiopeia has, has it. Too. Our local stores mm-hmm. ha- um, carry copies of it. 
So that's if you're interested in the Rocky Mountain Front. He's working on one on the Little Belts right now. Oh. And he's going to put it all online. So that's exciting. Yeah, he's working on that one. Will you tell him so I emailed him before to have him come on the podcast <laughs> as well? So when his book's ready, yeah, yeah tell okay. him we want to talk to him. Yeah, okay. And you can tell him it's not scary. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and his she hasn't voice decided. might order her to tell <laughs> him it's yeah. not scary. <laughs> and his voice might sound sexy on yeah. this microphone, right? Yeah, that's the other thing. Deeper. Yeah. Yes. Deeper. And okay. So his so books. Yes, yeah. His books and. Um, you know, there are lots of Facebook groups out there. Yeah. And um, probably other ones as well. There's one on hiking Great Falls. Yeah. And mm-hmm. all the people there would be very happy to help. Yeah. Um, you could fly an email off the Girls and Glacier site, girlsandglacier.com, yeah. and happy to help there. And um, if you are looking at the Little Belts, the Avenza app on your phone you can load maps into it. And one of the maps is the Little Belts. And that was done in, uh, I think, 2014. And it it tells you which trails are motorized and, you know, all that. And all of it is just wonderful on there. And it stays updated with all the travel plan changes so people know. Well, if they redo another travel plan, they'll redo the events map. Okay. Right now, it's it's the 2014 is the current okay. travel okay. plan. Perfect. Avenza, like A V A V E N Z A. Oh, great! That's what was. And my it's guess. free. Okay. And the little belts map is free. And okay. Avenza is completely free, but some maps you have to buy. Uh, okay. So um, the other one that I would really highly suggest for you for Avenza is. Um, the Helena. Helena has huge trail systems. Mm. And again, that's, you know, not even an hour and a half drive right. from us. The Scratch Gravel Hills there, you can mm-hmm. download the map. And the Helena South Hills map with nice. all their trails there. Um, Avenza, I've downloaded all kinds of maps. But they I get the free ones, which are older maps usually. They're free. They're from okay. 1960s or 1970s. <laughs> so some of the trails might be a little bit off. But okay. what I like is it shows you where you are. Yeah. So even if there's a new trail that you're on, you can still see how to get back to yeah. your car. You know, <laughs> <laughs> That's always important. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it, I like it just because it's all free. I don't pay for anything. Yeah. This all trails one that I just got a subscription for. Is it, what are your, have you used that before? What are your thoughts on that? I do have, I I don't pay for the all trails, but um, what I find is it's all user-based and some people don't turn their GPS on until they're halfway through the hike Mm. and you look at their map and it says it's six miles when it's really 12. Oh, that's good to know. Or, you know, they're using... um, some device that is not recording accurately. Okay. So I use it for a general idea okay. of a trail. But Good then I Google and look for something more official. Okay. Um, if you're looking at Glacier Park, they have trail maps with all the mileage and everything mm-hmm. right on the on okay. the National Park site. Okay. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to stray us a little bit sure. just because I'm interested. Have you ever done the crazies? Um, I have not. I've I did something a long time ago when I lived in Bozeman, but yeah. I have not. Okay. Wow. I've not done too much, but the snowies. Yeah. Mm. And those snowies are, are good. Yeah. yeah. The crazies I've, have just opened up some new areas are a little yeah. more easy access, mm-hmm. I guess. The areas were open, but they were difficult to get into. So it's extremely I'm excited rugged. to, to mm. um, check out these new access points. My aunt and I went in um, shortly after she got her knees replaced, and this was the hike we were going to do kind of as a reward for her new knees. And then that's the trip she determined, because we were going to hike through, um, and that's the trip she determined, nope, we're just going to be day hikers (laughs) for the rest of our lives. Because it's just a lot easier to go for a day hike and then go to a nice comfy bed. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. that's uh, Mm -hmm. what we've decided. but. Um, rugged, rugged mountain range. Mm -hmm. So cool. That's it. (laughs) Well, end on a weird note. (laughs) (laughs) I have what I, what final question, I guess. Well, it's maybe a two parter. Do you have any trails, spots, things that you would not recommend? Oh, like don't go there or only go there if you're like expert level or something, any places to avoid. 
You can say um, no. I just didn't know if there was anything we should be steering people away from if they're not expert level. I, I would say, well, I'm not sure if it's with expert level. Mm-hmm. I would just steer people away from, especially in the winter time, away if you're on snowshoes or skiing, try to avoid the snowmobile yeah. trails. Okay. Because you come around a blind cur- mm. curve facing a snowmobile, it could be dangerous. So yeah. it's more of that kind of a That's thing. a good recommendation. And, or just yeah. be aware, you know, you're on a... Yeah. And they're all clearly marked with the designated um, snowmobile picture. Y- yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Little, well, know. they're round. Yeah. They're um, yeah. orange or red round circles as a snowmobile. The blue diamonds for the ski and the quiet trail. Yeah. And so when you're on one of those, just be aware that you could be running in. And so sometimes we do our loops and things that we've kind of engineered require going on some of those so whenever I'm with people I say we're staying on the far side you yeah. hear a snowmobile ditch it in yeah. the snow right now you know don't wait because don't get hit. we don't yeah. know how fast they're coming so yeah. just jump into the snowbank and <laughs> <laughs> wait it out a minute yeah. you know so just being yeah. careful and um, sometimes everybody wants to go to the things that are being you know advertised as real this is where you have to go Sometimes those are the places that are so crowded and hard to get into that the experience isn't very nice because yeah. there are just too many people on the trail. And um, so I encourage people to Take try them. some of the other trails that are not all over social media. Yeah, that's fair. What are your five, like for summertime, five must-haves to take with you on a hike? Mm. Well, you know, the hiking associations have their 10 essentials, and okay. I would suggest that you Google the 10 essentials okay. and You'll agree with make those. sure that, <laughs> yes, that okay. probably, they probably don't specifically list under safety gear, bear mm-hmm. spray. So in Montana, bear spray. Think mm-hmm. bear spray, you have to add that to your list, but um I mean, I could try to list them off the top oh, of my okay. head, but no, I would say give people just the homework. Yeah. hiking your... 10 essentials, yeah. and that's important for you to read through those okay. and make sure that you have those. And I will emphasize rain gear. I don't mm. care if it says 10% <laughs> chance of rain yeah. or 0%, the mountains dream up their own weather, yeah, and they fair. do, and just yesterday we were hiking in the rain and some people said oh well um, up in this area you know it doesn't show any rain well the so- whole second half of the hike was in rain it was beautiful when we started yeah. out mm-hmm. so you just don't know and you can get hypothermic pretty quickly yeah. if you get cold and wet so um always have it. rain gear always have rain favorite gear. snack always. to take with you on the trail mm. um well i really like um honey stingers or cliff blocks okay what are those and these are they have protein bars yeah they they have electrolytes Uh which sometimes especially on strenuous hikes we're drinking a lot of water so we're flushing those electrolytes out of our body and these have energy some Mm -hmm. of them you can buy them with caffeine too so they give you a little little boost boost (laughs) there as well as replenishing Uh your electrolytes and and uh have a little sweet with them okay. too. So, does that uh, what our friends over at Bighorn have those or know where to tell us to get those? Yes, two J's. Two J's has it. Okay, yeah, probably a lot of places. Okay, yeah. will be carrying Just especially the the cliff blocks. Yeah, and they're they're like jelly chews is what they okay. are. Okay, and the honey stingers. I know that you can get them at Bighorn. I'm not okay. sure that I've seen them anywhere else in town. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay. You could Good to know. On that. And Especially then other than that, right. <laughs> I say protein too. Mm-hmm. I take along little packets of almond butter or nuts. Yeah. I'm vegetarian, mm-hmm. so I'm oh. I'm relying more on the, the nuts sure. and that type of thing. And other people might pack jerky. Mm-hmm. But I will say don't pack things like those fresh tuna packs and chicken Eel. because the smell <laughs> will bring in a bear, you know. Yeah. One of, yeah. I'm sure you've all seen those pictures of grizzlies fishing yeah. <laughs> in Alaska. They, they like, know what yeah. it smells like. And, they like it. And we just had that incident in Many Glacier. It closed the whole campground yep. with a guy oh, gutting a fish on his camping table. Mm. So um, fish smell smell is not one that you want to have on you while yeah. you're hiking. The less smelly <laughs> snacks, the better. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
good deal. Well, Katie, it's been a blast. Um, And folks, re-listen to this episode as many times as you need to. Yes. Um, I will try to put in the notes section links or comments about things that we talked about for people as well. There you go. Mm -hmm. And we'll do our best to get you into the people who know way more than we do. Which isn't hard to find. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know how many times we have to tell you. (laughs) We send you to the experts. Yes, yep. we aren't the ones that you want to be talking Obviously. to. So thanks, Katie, for being Thank in you. our podcast yeah. studio. That's great. Uh, it's nice enough outside and early enough you can get an afternoon hike in. So um, <laughs> it's a down day for that. me after yesterday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So thank you so much. And folks, until we see your bright, smiling, happy, healthy, beautiful face here in Great Falls, we hope you are creating amazing memories with your friends and family wherever you are. See you soon. We are no damn experts as the recorded claims from Great Falls, Montana, covering what you need to know about this amazing damn town. Damn, that felt good.